Our students, welcome back to another video. And if you saw the end of the last video, I talked about drawing a private comic book, and this is what we're going to discuss today. So what is a private comic book, number one? A private comic book is drawing a comic book that's going to be private. Only you are going to see that comic book. That's it. It's just your comic book. Nobody else will see that unless you choose to show it to you. But the reason why nobody's going to see it, because it's not ready to be seen yet. A lot of times we say to ourselves, okay, well, I know how to draw the torso. I know how to draw this. I'm ready for this, but I'm not quite that good yet, but I want to put out a comic book. So by doing this, it will show you exactly where your weaknesses are. If you're ready, it will allow you to play around. It will allow you to try some different things because this is nothing that's going to be published. This is nothing that's going to be really shown to your friends. This is something that's going to boost your skills. It's going to show you. It's going to humble you. It's going to amaze you. It's going to make you work harder. It's going to make you say, hey, I, I'm good at this already. So this is why I say it's a private comic book. So the first thing you want to do is either you can use a sketch pad or you can use use you know, copy paper. I usually don't like doing any sketch pads because I don't like to rest my arm on the metal. And to me, the border is like a wall. You can't kind of flow through. Whereas if you use, you know, paper, you can just keep on going. You got that flow. But to me, this is like a barrier. But I'm going to do this anyway. So the one thing that you want to do is you get your paper. You want to do six panels. We're going to do six even panels. Just six. Split it down the middle right here and then right here and this is this is the thing you want to do six panels and later on we're not inking this yet so later on we can change panel size uh, take away panels but you want to start this just in the beginning so every page is going to be like this and you have to have a story you don't have to have a killer um, Batman story or killer or whatever story or in the future and such and such you're just going to Draw a story think of something a situation in your head And you're just going to draw the next panel and the next panel and the next panel and this will allow you to like I said number one You'll see am I ready for this or I don't know how to do this and because you're making mistakes You're saying okay. I need to work on this. I need to practice that as you continue to draw and you can keep this and then later on, like three months later, you can come back and say, okay, now I understand this was wrong. Let me fix that. And you can continue to work on it until you get it perfected or you can redraw it. It's just, it's great, great practice without the pressure of trying to say or trying to get something right. So just a basic story. Let's just say this guy is sitting down, first panel, this guy is sitting down at the table and he's eating some peanut butter okay it's not gonna be perfect because this is just like roughly out of my head because there are all angles that when you start doing comic books you want to consider what angle is best first like for instance I want to draw this mouse this is, this is a mouse I say to myself okay I'm gonna draw this mouse do I want to draw it looking straight down do I want to draw it from like a three-quarter angle do I want to draw it from the front you want to draw it from the bottom. So anytime you draw anything, this is how your mind, in your mind's eye, you should be seeing something rotate around to make it more exciting for the person to see. So for me, if I was going to draw this mouse, I'm going to draw it like at this angle. It's not really stagnant. It's not, you know, just where you can't say, you can say, hey, what is that? I don't know what that is, but that's just, it's just enough for that good angle. So let's just say a guy was sitting at the table, what did I say, he's eating peanut butter. So in my mind right away, I'm, I'm, I am thinking how close, how far, how big, how small, what angle. So you, you think about that, where's the camera? Is the camera above, is it below? So I'm just gonna draw, and let's say I'm gonna put them over here. Now whenever you draw, you always have to, if there's dialogue, you're gonna have to have the word room for your word balloon so you don't want to throw the guy way up in here and then you know you, your dialogue won't fit so let's just let's just say and hopefully you can see this um let's do blue pencil let's do blue so and I, as i said it's just i'm just i'm just doing and you guys can follow along so 
how high would the table come? Is the table gonna come to his stomach? Is the table gonna come to his chest? So I want, I want, I want you to know he is at the table. So I'm gonna put the table right here. So I'm gonna lift him up a little bit more. Let's just lift him up a little bit more. It's a small table so far. It should be a bigger table. So I'm going to make the table even bigger. So it's like this. It's gonna be his torso. And this is going to be the jar, and he's going to be holding the jar. And this is going to be very rough. This is why I want you to just do this very rough. Use shapes, use your stick figure, however you want to, to do it. But it's just to show you. It's just to relax you, basically. It's to relax you and then show you that okay i need to work on this uh, i need to work on that a little bit this is not right i could add a better angle and then <clears throat> let's just say and add a little detail this is and i'm going to ink mine you shouldn't ink yours this is just rough drawing for you but then um i'm just going to put this right here this is the refrigerator Here's a cabinet. Here is uh, this thing, maybe like a coffee coffee maker. I don't drink coffee, so I don't know. This is you'd have to look up coffee maker, and that way you know. That, oh, this guy's in the kitchen. That's his refri refrigerator freezer, like that. So just by inking this real quick on a smaller pen. Come on, Brian, time is a wasting. You should have all your pens out. This is 005, but is it black? And it's dying. Just use what you have. All right, so here's, here's um, this is just gonna be a jar of peanut butter here. And it's gonna say, you know, peanut butter. So you'll know, this is hand, how the hand is gonna be holding that jar of peanut butter. And right here, he's going to have a spoon. You can have it, since I've got it down here already, he's got the spoon with peanut butter in it. And again, this is going to be really rough. Because I want to get through the story. I don't want to, I want to, I don't want to stay long drawing a, a lot of panels. I'm going to show you guys, and as I go along, you will see and understand some of the things that you have to do. Kitchen cabinet, coffee maker, whatever coffee maker is, counter. So you know this guy's in the kitchen, and because he's sitting down, I'll put a chair here. I'm not worried about clothes or anything like that. And he could be like, mmm, delicious peanut butter. He could say that. So this doesn't make a difference, this little bit of space. So you can say, word balloon in here. Oh, I love delicious peanut butter. Here's a peanut butter top, spoon, table. You can have whatever else is on the table. Table cuts across him to show. And then, so next panel is, you're just thinking, okay, so what's the next panel going to be? Let's just say he is putting the peanut butter in his mouth. So since it's going that way, let's continue to have it go that way instead of reversing the shot. I can reverse the shot and show what's on the other side of the kitchen, but since this is a close up, I'm not, I'm gonna think about it too hard. So I wanna pull it over, but just for the sake of, you, you understand. So this is putting a spoon in his mouth. And his mouth, his nose, and his eyes, and here's the, but the thing is, he hears something. So he's looking, he's got the peanut butter in his mouth, oh, good peanut butter. His mouth, so he's left-handed, obviously, because I've got this going this way. But he, he hears something, and you can have, like, the other side of the refrigerator here, and whatever cabinet's here. Here's something, whatever, click. Next panel is, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just, we're just going here. 
All right, so the next panel is, let's just say something is coming through his door. This monster is coming through his doorway, right? So I want to, as I'm saying, you want to always see that camera in your mind should be rotating. So I'm going to put him down here. This is the doorway. This is whatever is next to the kitchen. So look up like reference. I say references are your best friend. Look up kitchens. Um, and see, you know, it, or look at your kitchen. Is your doorway, uh, your refrigerator by your doorway? Is there something else by the doorway? So you can use that as reference and you won't have to stress too bad. So. Here's this monster coming into the door and I usually I would have the arm up let's just say here and I have the arm up and the hand on the doorway so I'll pull the doorway open a little bit more and I'm going to do one or two more panels because time wise time wise I am trying to say so let's just say he looked back his mouth is open and let's just do like a close up of his face, okay? He's like, holy, no, it's gonna be up. He's gonna be looking up because that creature's up. So I'm gonna make his whole demeanor up. And then you have a picture of the monster. Since He's looking down, and again, as I say, you always want to rotate, rotate, rotate. I keep forgetting to say that, but you want to rotate every time you want to draw. The monster is looking down like, you know, that was my peanut butter. Okay, so now we have this. I don't want to go any further, but every day you can add to this. Or you can just continue to add rough drawing and you can come back and you can practice your inking. Once you get your inking done, you can start doing some color on it. You can scan it and color in Photoshop and, and mess it up and nobody will care. You can color it with a color pencil. You can color in crayons. So this is the whole thing about being a private comic book. But the one thing is, like, once you have this, now, as I say, I could go back. I can straighten it out. I can work on my shapes. I can work on my inking. I can say, okay, um, it's going to be a lot of light in there. It's not going to be any light. I can say, I want to put a little shadow under here and here. You know, dress the guy. He's got you know clothes on. Uh, I'm going to shadow this. Maybe some shadow under there. Maybe the light is coming this way. Um, all kind of things. The reflection from the. The refrigerator. The refrigerator could be, you know, um, with a stainless steel appliance. Um, all the things that it takes to put in a comic, once you have this, because you're not really stressing over it, it's easier to draw for you and it's easier to make a mistake and it's easier for you to say, whatever, it's just, it's just practice. It's just good practice. And as I say, you can redraw the panels over and over again. Or if you don't, ink it right away you can erase it and then add more to it like if he's got this if he got the if he's got the spoon in his mouth how would that hand go if he's left-handed if he's putting that peanut butter in his mouth which is something i'd have to look at reference because right now i can't see that but if you're drawing and the more you see something the more you memorize it and it becomes easier to draw for you Because you've seen it. it's just like drawing or writing, you know, your letters, A, B, C. You've done it so much then you, that you can you can um, do it with your eyes closed. And that's, a, that's the only difference about drawing and not drawing is that we, we don't see it. We don't, I don't know what a nuclear submarine is, so it's going to take me a minute to draw a nuclear submarine. But, you know, I know what a face looks like, so it, it shouldn't take me long to draw a face. Because I've drawn it over and over again. No, he's not looking up at that point. He's looking over because he heard a, heard a, the sound. It's not a click sound. It's, it could be a growl or something like that. 
Okay, I'm just going to do a square for that hand, but I know since it's left-handed, it's going to be coming over. It's going to be coming over in front of his face. And he's not going to be grabbing it like this. If you're holding a spoon, you could be holding it like that. But if you're coming over left-handed and it's you're, you're seeing the back, he's seeing his front, but you're seeing the back. So again, good reference helps with that. So from there, I could say, okay, I'm going to do the hair. Different hairstyles. Again, I can play with light and shadow. Uh, hatching, whatever I wanted to do. Because, as I say, it is your private comic book. Is the end of the refrigerator. Maybe refrigerator. Let's just say the wall. This is going to be the, since you're looking at an angle, this is going to be going to the side. The refrigerator, and this is going to be the end of your wall. Look at your wall. This is, the wall is just not a line. The wall has got some thickness to it. So, shoulder this going back. You can have some shadow or something down here. But all of this is to show you what it's going to take to put up a comic book so that you won't be in such a rush to say, oh, I have to get it out. I have to get it out because you are putting out a comic book. A lot of people want to just say, oh, I have a comic book company. I have a comic book company. No, you just you just drawing comics. You just sit around and you're drawing like an independent comic. It's not really a company, but we're so quick to want to say that. But then you put something out and, you know, it doesn't look right because you have so many so much competition out there already that your book is not going to stand out. This is why you want to do something like this. Take your time. Get it right. You have plenty of life left unless you're like 92 and just like, oh, I want to put a comic book out before I die. You know, take your time. Do this. Do something like this every day. Add something to the story. Add something to the story. He's mad. He's like, you ate the last of my peanut butter. And then so you can say this. There's your jar of peanut butter, and you can show somehow, or you can angle it to show that it's the last of it. You can angle it down, and then you show just a little bit of peanut butter at the bottom. I would angle it more, but just for time's sake, a little bit of peanut butter, and peanut butter smeared on the side. And here's the top over here. And maybe, you know, his hand could still be on the side of it, but I don't know. And then again, peanut butter, table, you know, got, you could have like some crackers or whatever on the, uh, the table. But again, anytime you draw a panel, before you start drawing, you want to rotate everything in your head, which is the best angle for you or for the reader to see it and, and be excited. Um, adding all the other elements, as I said, your, your light and shadow, your perspective, you know, so that since that's looking down, you know, your perspective line is up here. So anything, you know, else I draw has got to fit on that perspective line. The monster's looking down. You could say I want him to be looking down a little bit more. So let me just do this curve here and then here. Curve him down a little bit more, make him a little more angrier. That way he's looking down. That way you see that he's looking down on the guy a little bit more. And I'll bring his shoulders up even more. So. Show too much chin. And then what is collarbone coming down there? And the eyes are down. Give 
little some more fangs because you know all monsters have fangs. So basically, and that wouldn't be because if you're looking down, you'd see the bottom teeth, not the top teeth. So basically, again, you're drawing a comic book. It's a private comic book. Nobody's going to see that but you. You don't feel pressured. You don't. You don't. You don't worry about. I've got to get this right. Oh, this arm is still not right. It's still not right. It's still not right. Draw it in the next panel, or draw it to the side, or or or, or take a piece of uh, paper, and then say, okay, this is. I'm going to get this hand right. Do it that way, and then you know, come back and erase it. You know. So basically, this is going to be your guideline for a start. Draw it. Keep going. This helps you to do pacing. It helps you from panel to panel. It helps you to story tell. It also helps you get your figures right. So by doing this, you're actually doing yourself a justice by drawing every day. Like I said, you can do one panel a day or you can just do 20, 30 roughs. If you're more of a storyteller, you can find out, hey, I can tell stories better than I can draw. You know, that helps. Maybe you can tell somebody's story. You can panel to panel, your pacing, everything is, is just grouped into doing this. And that helps you, but you have to swallow your pride and not say, oh, I want to get this out. I want to get this the best. Don't worry about that. You have time to do that. Do something like this and every day just add to the story. And it doesn't, you don't have to have an existing story. What happens next? He's looking at the peanut butter. So what do you think is going to happen next? First thing that pops into your head is what can happen next. The monster could jump at the guy or the guy could run with the peanut butter in his hand not knowing it's in his hand it could be stuck to his hand he could run out the door the monster could be smashing through the door because he's bigger what's the next thing you think you just do that and then draw the image that goes along with what you see by circling in your mind's eye the view that you see so yeah, I mean, I can go on and on and on and on about this, but as I want to try to keep my things down to about 20 minutes, 30 minutes the most. So just give this a try. As I say, give this a try. Don't try to, don't try to be perfect. Again, don't try to be perfect. This is just roughing. It's just roughing. And then you'll get to see what you are better at. You're better at storytelling. You're better at penciling. You're better at inking. And... Yeah, it's all practice. It's all practice. And after you get a number of pages done, you can come back to the first page and say, oh, okay, I can redo that. You do it on another piece of paper. Start a whole panel again. It, it calls you. What does a coffee maker look like? What does a refrigerator, what does a kitchen look like? I have to go uh, find reference. And all of this stuff leads up to you trying to be or becoming a professional comic book artist. It's just by doing something simple as this. All right, so that's going to be it for this drawing a private comic book. This is more informational than, I'm not going to say educational because it's education. All right, so that's going to be it. I'll see you guys in the next video. We're continuing to, continue, continuing to draw the anatomy using the shapes, and then we'll get into this. But this is for all you guys that were just like, you know, I want to move on. I want to move on. Try this. See how good you are. See what you need to improve. All right, that's enough teaching. Later.